uh, with uh, Baylor football as well. We're now joined by Pat Smith, again, part of uh, radio in Birmingham for a long, long time and also a three-man front and uh, has been a part of covering uh, college football for many years. Pat, thanks for your time. So right now, uh, what are your thoughts of where we are with college football in the landscape at this time? Well, if you're in the Big Ten and the SEC, uh, you keep printing those big checks every spring. That's where we are in college football. I think what we're seeing now with the realignment, I really liked what I heard from Brett Yarmark last week at the Big 12 Media Days. I think it's huge for them to be aggressive. I like what I hear him in regards to potential expansion into the Pac-12. Because let's be honest, once the evaluation comes back from the Pac-12, I'm not really sure ESPN or anybody else is going to bid that big for the Pac-12. So I think it would, you know, obviously be in the best interest for the Big 12 to to look at some schools and be able, whether it's the Four Corners schools or anybody else, because I know you guys have already talked about that incessantly. I think it's a good opportunity for the Big 12 to take advantage of the weak prowess now of what's going on at the Pac-12. Pat, uh, where do you, you – in Birmingham, you're in the heart of SEC country. How do you grade the conferences past the Big 12 and SEC, just in your opinion, about their, their strength and their standing right now? Well, obviously the Big Ten and the SEC, based on the fact of the revenue and based on the teams potentially that could play for a national championship, that's going to be the highest. But I really like what the Big 12 has done. I, re- I really do. In regards to the teams that obviously are now going to come to the SEC – But what they've been able to do to fill the ranks back with the likes of of Central Florida and Cincinnati and the BYUs and the the Houstons, that's why I think this is very important for them to be able to go cherry pick some programs that they believe is going to be like-minded. It's going to be programs that within the next four to five years, it's going to be able to add to the whole package of the Big 12. I definitely put the Big 12 right now ahead of the ACC. So that's why I think it's important for Yarmark and the conference as a whole to be aggressive and to be able to cement that number three spot behind the SEC and the Big Ten. Pat, we were just talking about uh, some of Kevin Warren's comments today, and I think one of the most interesting when it comes to realignment was not only him saying that, you know, basically they're not done with expansion, that he's going to keep hunting. Uh, and That could be, you know, any number of things, Notre Dame, Oregon, Washington, whatever. But one of the big selling points remaining for the Pac-12 was that late-night kickoff time, and he comes out today and basically says, well, now we got UCLA and USC. We're going to be able to play all day long. Um, I don't take that as the best news for the Pac-12. Uh, I was curious how you kind of read that, and just how do you read the room for the Pac in general? What would you do if you were in their shoes right now? Well, you know, it's really surprising to me that perhaps whether it was Stanford or an Oregon or a Washington, and I listen, I know you guys hear it all the time, this whole AAU argument. Let, let's call it the way this is now. This is It's always been minor league football to the NFL, and for people to keep hiding behind the academics, I mean, come on now. I mean, it's just every time I hear Kevin Warren, I want to throw up, you know, when he, when he brings up about, you know, we're going to be bold. We're going to be aggressive. But, you know, by the way, they've got to be AAU members and, and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, the television viewer does not care about what kind of grades you're making in your science class. What they want to see is they want to see a competitive football game. And that's why the SEC has done a really nice job over the years, not saying that they don't care about academics, but it's the fact that whether it's a Georgia-Alabama matchup or even an LSU and a Florida matchup, that's going to play in Spokane, Washington. Or if you're a casual football fan in San Francisco, you might tune in and watch 30 minutes or 45 minutes of the game. Meanwhile, you don't have that in the Pac-12. And the fact that you've got USC, which they name program, but when you have a Washington State program that has had more winning seasons over the last decade than UCLA football, I wouldn't be hanging my hat on the Bruins program in regards to what they can do for football. So where they currently stand, I'm kind of shocked that they didn't go after another maybe a couple traveling partners from the west coast but i think the whole the whole situation with notre dame has got them flummoxed i mean they want notre dame they think they can get notre dame and so if they were to get notre dame then that's where i think that they potentially would go after stanford but then at that point in time you know does a cow across the bay are they irritated because they've already lost ucla now again stanford's a private school so that might be a whole different you know you know card of eggs that you got to deal with But for me, the Big Ten, they're in a situation where I think they need at least two more, but they're holding out for Notre Dame to be that one. Yeah, but Pat, the the, the double-edged sword is that Notre Dame, they don't have to wait for anybody. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. 
No question. And listen, if they wanted to be in a conference, based on the fact that the ACC and they play everything else in the ACC, I think they would have already been a part of the ACC. But they're making $15 million now a year based on the NBC contract. They're going to get $75 million once this comes to fruition after 2025. Now, you're looking at the Big Ten, who's looking at $100 plus million per school. The SEC and their new contract with ABC and ESPN and Disney, that's going to put them close to the $100 million a year per school average that you're going to get every spring. So Notre Dame's looking around. They're like, you know, we can still make money as an independent, but if we do not have a pathway, a clear path to play for a national championship without being in a conference, that could be problematic. And since you guys have seen in regards to the CFP expansion, not really sure exactly where that's going to go because it blew up in everybody's face a year ago once Oklahoma and Texas came to the SEC. Nobody wanted to play ball with Greg Sankey and the SEC and the CFP committee. But, yeah, Notre Dame holds all the cards right now. But if they can get their $75, $80 million from NBC on a new contract, there's absolutely no reason for them to join a conference unless they are kept out because the Big Ten and SEC sets new rules for the CFP. What an upside down backwards world we're living in when Notre Dame's the hope for college football. <laughs> and, we hope it. and they know it, it too. Is, isn't it? And they know it too, and they're going to take their sweet time. Um, but you, you mentioned the expansion. I, I found it interesting today that uh, there was a little bit of that talk uh, as far as the college football playoff. Uh, Kevin Warren uh, gave an ind- endorsement for expansion. Um, and I, I keep seeing the 16 team playoff floating around a lot today. Um, I guess now that everybody's kind of getting their ducks in the row a little bit, do you think that this is going to spur some momentum towards moving in that direction? And what do you think that actually looks like? Because I know the big fear for most people is just, you know, two conferences taking up every playoff spot imaginable. But it also seems like they're leaving the door open that, you know, there will be some representation from outsider conferences as well if that were to go through. Well, it's interesting because I was in Atlanta last week for SEC Media Days. And, uh, you know, the topic of the discussion – on the microphone and off the air behind closed doors with, with people inside the SEC, you know, they're, they're not looking forward to moving forward with giving, let's say a mountain West school, a pathway to play for a national championship. The SEC is perfectly fine. Now, now that they blew up the original plan in which the Alliance came through and blocked it last year, the SEC is perfectly fine with four teams because, you know, it worked out pretty well last year. With Georgia and Alabama playing for the national championship, they feel good, especially with Oklahoma and Texas coming in, that whether you decide it's going to be eight or even 12 or even 16, the SEC is going to be able to put as many teams in as possible. I mean, let's keep in mind, you know, when you hear the comments from Kevin Warren today, when he said, look, you know, I want to have multiple media partners be able to broadcast the college football playoff. Well, that's a direct shot at ESPN. I mean, he's taking his orders from the Fox network, who is going to consummate this huge deal with the big 10 in a matter of days. So, you know, the SEC is going to protect its home territory, which is obviously ESPN who currently owns the college football playoffs. So, you know, that's where these sides, it's going to be very interesting to see where the middle ground is going to be between Kevin Warren and Greg Sankey moving forward, because you got Fox and you got ESPN, ESPN don't want to give it up. Fox wants to at least have, a game or a rotation where they can have the national championship game. This is where this is all heading, and and it'll be interesting to see how it ultimately divides out because at the end of the day, we all know it's going to be about the money and how much money can all of these schools make based on whoever's covering the college football playoff. What money to you is more important for colleges? The money they might get from ESPN or Fox or whoever else for television revenue or for the billions that some get because of their academic partnerships? Um, Well, I mean, if you're talking about just intercollegiate athletics, obviously it's going to be their television partners. I mean, I think we all know that basically, you know, it's the tail wagging the dog right now, and that's why once Fox put the bug in the Big Ten's ear and said, hey, look, you know, if you've got a, a West Coast presence, especially the number two media market in the United States, you know, that could help your valuation out. And you know what? We might go uh, $1.2 billion as opposed to just $1 billion. Then you divide that up amongst your 16 schools equal shares. That's a really nice payday. I think that if Fox had not put that bug in the Big Ten's ear, I'm not really sure the Big Ten would have expanded. But at the end of the day, I think they needed to do something to combat what the SEC did 
with Texas and Oklahoma because they felt that Greg Sankey and the SEC was getting too much power and they needed something to be able to offset that huge move. Uh, Pat Smith, again, co-host of Three Man Front, also on radio in Birmingham and has been for quite some time with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. His Twitter feed up on the screen at Pat Smith uh, Radio as well. So you were at big uh, SEC media days, and, and obviously there is a lot of discussion about the, the football teams and who is this, Alabama, Georgia, and vice versa. How much discussion was there about the incoming teams in Texas and Oklahoma? You know, there was a good bit. Obviously, Alabama's playing Texas the second week of the season this year, and obviously Steve Sarkeesian, uh, being a former Alabama assistant coach, that's gotten a lot of play. Texas has done very well in the state of Alabama, grab, grabbing some, some highly touted recruits. And, of course, there's been some transfers out of the transfer portal that was on Alabama's roster last year. So there was a lot more talk about that. And But w- most of the people – believe that Oklahoma is obviously in a much better position from a program standpoint to be competitive quicker than Texas. They do believe Sarkeesian in the way that they have been recruiting, that they're going to be someone that you'll have to deal with, more so Texas A&M than the rest of the SEC. But they believe that Oklahoma will be more competitive coming into the league quicker. And listen, guys, I know you guys are in the state of Texas and you hear a lot of stuff too. But the people I talk to around the SEC, we still believe that we're about one year away from officially welcoming Texas and Oklahoma into the league. I know there's a lot of stuff that has to happen, all this realignment, what the Big 12 potentially could do, the grant of rights and everything that could potentially let Oklahoma and Texas out early. But the people that I talk to, they've maintained that they really do believe by next summer at this time, we'll be getting ready to welcome into the SEC, Oklahoma, and Texas. Well, which means they're going to be writing some big checks and they have the money for the most part to be able to do that or about to get even more uh, to be able to write the, the various things from grant of rights and or the exit fees as well. Just to be clear, do you mean as far as like playing, not this upcoming season, but playing as, as early as, you know, next year, year after this one? I would say 2024 is a more realistic expectation. Okay. Yeah, yeah and that, I think and we're that on board sense. with that. And, yeah. and you know, when Pat, that story broke a, a year ago, Friday, by the way, when Brett Zerneman had that story about yeah. Texas and Oklahoma, there were thoughts, and I think Texas and Oklahoma probably hoped that the Big 12 would implode, and the next thing you know, they walk out the door because there's no, there's no fence. That obviously didn't happen. They were able to, to try to solidify what they were or who they were, and uh, I, w- I was surprised it wouldn't happen by 23, but I, 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 I'm, I'm – the Big 12 is going to hold their you know, ground. Texas and Oklahoma have been patient. And trying to pay out a year rather than two or three, there's a huge difference, even though there's yeah. a lot of legal ease that goes into the, the grant of rights and all that other stuff as well. Yeah, no, no, there's no question about that because, listen, you guys are much closer to it from a Texas perspective right down the road as opposed to, you know, obviously I'm broadcasting and, and know a, a great deal of what goes on inside the Southeastern Conference, and nobody thinks that anyone is going to write a check for 80 to $100 million to leave the Big 12 early. But if things keep playing out in regards to realignment and certain things that could potentially happen with ESPN and maybe a creation of the Big 12 network because the Longhorn network is going away once they join the conference, and you never know when, when Brett Yarmark wants to sit down and talk to Texas and Oklahoma and say, you know what, guys? This is going to be a better situation for all of us, you know, a year earlier than expected. Let's just go ahead and part ways. And I think at that point in time, Texas and Oklahoma would be in a better a better shape, especially Oklahoma, to write a check to go ahead and head to the SEC. But, uh, again, a year ago, like you mentioned, being there at SEC Media Days and that story coming out, and all of us were, were as surprised as everyone about that story – Nothing would surprise me moving forward based on everything we've seen, especially now with the Big Ten kind of rustling up everything in regards to realignment. I, I kind of suspect when they have to make a 14-team schedule uh, that's not going to be you know easy to replicate, especially given the fact that you have to do it for two years max and then do it again, and then you might have added some more teams subsequently and then may have to do a 16-team schedule with four different teams and two that went out, then maybe the big trouble won't be motivated to go, all right, all right, all right, let's just move on to where we're going to be. Yeah, and, and listen, and, and it's an interesting part about the scheduling as you talked about because that's been a big topic of discussion 
in, in my neck of the woods because, you know, what are we going to do? Are we getting rid of the divisions? Are we going to go to a pod system? Um, now it seems like, you know, they're, they're going to go to nine conference games as opposed to the eight they currently play, which means each team's going to have three permanent opponents. Well, then all of a sudden, who's Texas going to be, have three permanent opponents? Who's, you know, Oklahoma going to play all the time? And then that's going to upset everybody on the eastern side of the conference because you got a lot of old rivalries between Auburn and Georgia, even Alabama and Auburn and Alabama, Tennessee, and Alabama, LSU. So something's got to give in the near future. So we'll be very interesting to see how it all pans out, especially with those teams coming in, who their permanent rivals will end up being. Pat, if in fact, and of course you see scenarios, and I cannot see this, I know that I'm in probably the minority or a little bit less than the majority of any kind of a super two. Uh, Craig kind of named it that, whether it's the Big Ten, SEC, whatever number of teams it might be. Well, it would be those two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, no, I, I know that. I just don't know. But can you actually imagine a national championship being crowned that may not include, let's say, teams like Oregon, Washington, last year with Baylor and Oklahoma State, Clemson, Florida State, among others, if they can't join other conferences? Can you see that truly as an, a, a true national championship with two conferences? You know, it, it would be hard for me to say this uh, six weeks ago. Uh, my answer to that would be no. But based on my trip to Atlanta and based on the, the large divide that we currently have when it comes to the college football playoff and the have and the have not, I really could see once this CFP contract is over with. Now, listen, I think, and I think you all agree with me, they will come to an agreement. We will be playing football. But let me tell you something. The way that these battle lines have been drawn and how they have been dug in, both on the SEC and the Big Ten side, listen, nothing would surprise me at all if they could not come to a conclusion and based on other realignment potential, you know, poti- you know, p- potential things that could happen, I would not be surprised in the least if the SEC, you know, that was floated out about, hey, look, you know, we've got 16 teams, we'll have our own playoff. You know a TV network will pay for it, and at the end of the day, they say, hey, we're the champion. Okay, so be it. I think the Big Ten kind of feels the same way the SEC does. I don't think we will get there, but I think it's a a smaller chance of it happening where I would have said it was zero chance happening six weeks ago. And if there was ever a sport that's got uh, a bunch of national champions and people who just claim title, it's college football, right? I mean, it's, it's, no, it's not just like clean cut like this. Or it hasn't always been just clean cut like there's a Super Bowl champion. College football's got plenty of, you know, uh, conversations about who won what what year I mean, over the course of its history. So that would almost be college football to have two national champions from two separate playoffs in a way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, you can look in the Alabama media guide. I mean, they claim 18 national championships. Right. and about four or five of them, they lost three or four games that year, and a, pub- and, a, and a publication gave them a national championship. So, yeah, I, I, you know, it'd be like the old days, the UPI, the AP winner, and then, you know, it, it, it was craziness. But at least at least the bowl games on New Year's Day used to be fun, right? So, yeah. who knows? We might get back to that one day. Bowl games on New Year's Day. What a what an idea, huh? That's Thank another question. concept, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, that's yeah. another yeah. question is bowl games. But, yeah, well, that's for another time. We, we've got plenty to discuss, I'm sure, here in the future, Brett. Thank uh, Pat, you very much, me. Pat. We appreciate your time, man. Good stuff. Pat Smith. Thanks, guys. Take care. The three-man front. And, uh, again, uh, he's out of Birmingham. Uh, the chat room is going nuts on different opinions of this and that. We 